we are in this track that's dealing with the Sunday school and um, the theme of our church and really of this conference is embracing our community, embracing your community with the love of Christ. And that's something that we've really made uh, a part of our ministry all along. We've just uh, we've felt like the Lord was leading us to give special attention, special emphasis to this in recent days. And um, this is really what this is all about. This session and what we're doing as far as starting Bible studies in local communities uh, really has much to do with embracing our community and letting the people know out in the local area that we are interested in getting the word of God to them. Uh, you know, you, you work very hard at building a Sunday school, and a Sunday school teacher will work hard to build a Sunday school class, but there are those out in our local communities on job sites and in schools and neighborhoods of the people that attend your church that may not come initially to a Sunday school class on a church campus, but if we could get the word of God to them, uh, they would be willing to attend or come to a Bible study. And we're going to talk about that. We've entitled this session, The Bible Study, and we're just simply seeking to teach others the word of God and helping you to recognize and realize that there is a vast opportunity in your local community, in the area in which you serve, to encourage the people in your church, Sunday school teachers, and it's particularly those that attend your Sunday school class, to recognize their own personal responsibility and accountability to God to go out and take what they're being taught and teaching it to someone else. That's what it's all about. It's taking it the next step and passing it down the line. And so that's what we're trying to emphasize in this particular session. I want to take you directly to Matthew 28, verse 19 and verse 20. The Bible gives us some clear instruction here. The Lord Jesus is speaking to the church and, and addressing the disciples that are there right before his ascension. And he says to them, Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Of course, we recognize this as one of the instances where the Great Commission is given. And there are so many things packed within these verses, and I will not belabor that, but I think we understand what we're to do. We are to go and make disciples, teach all nations, get the gospel to people, see people get saved we're, we're seeking the lost that's what we're to do but it doesn't stop there that's just a starting point that's just an entry point uh, we want to see people saved yes but we want to see them grow in the lord and 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 uh, become mature christians and so that's 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 a beginning point in fact it goes on here baptizing them we, after we see them saved, we want to see them follow the lord in believers baptism and that, that's simply a, a step of obedience in the life of a christian and identifying with the lord jesus christ in the local church and then goes on to say, teaching them, that word teaching there is a word that has to do with instructing line upon line and precept upon precept. That word teaching has very much to do with patiently instructing and leading someone along, that word teaching. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. That word observe is an interesting word. It's actually a word that um, can be used in, in, a, in a military sense, meaning to uh, not let something escape. Uh, to observe, to make it so important that you, you don't allow it to es escape. And so you're trying to teach people God's word, all things whatsoever he has commanded us in such a way that it does not escape them. They do, it does not get away from them. They can't, they can't escape it. And so uh, that's what we're trying to do. That's the work of the Lord, seeing people saved, reaching them with the gospel, and then teaching them the word of God so that they can grow in, the Christian, in their Christian walk with God. Um, the question is, why begin a Bible study? If you are in a local church and you have uh, great preaching and you have a Sunday school ministry perhaps and you have Sunday school classes where people can come and hear the Word of God taught, why begin a Bible study? Well, let me just propose this to you. The purpose of a Bible study is not just to know the Bible. It is to know the God of the Bible. That's, that's the purpose. That's what we're trying to get at. We're trying to know God better. And we come to know God through his word. His word is God's written revelation of himself to us. God is revealing himself. And as we study God's word, we come to know more and more of him. And the more we know him, the better we can serve him, the better we can obey him and, and, and observe to do everything he's commanded us to do. And so our motivation is to know God's word. And that motivation should uh, grow out of the higher motive, which is to know God himself. And knowing God naturally leads to another desire, and that is a desire to live for him and obey him with all of our hearts. You know, the, 
uh, I'm well acquainted with my wife. We've been married for over 10 years now. And the better I know her, the more I know her, the more I am equipped and able to please her and to, to anticipate the things that she needs. And, and I, 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 can, I can read her expressions and know what she's thinking, what she's feeling. I, I'm very sensitive to those things because I've come to know her so well. And the better you and I know the Lord Jesus and know the God that we serve, the better we are equipped to serve him. And so that's, that's what we're trying to get at in studying the Bible. We want to know God so that we can serve him in a better way. So the reason to begin a Bible study should be encur to encourage people to gather around the word of God and to study it with the desire to know God with the intent to observe to do all that is written therein, as Joshua 1.8 tells us. Now, there are a couple foundational principles that I want to uh, address just <coughs> to lay a foundation to in our thinking so that we understand why we're doing what we're doing, and then we'll talk about the how. We're going to begin with the why and move to the how. So uh, why begin a Bible study? We s we've seen this. We want to gather people. We, we believe that this is God's inerrant, infallible, inspired word of God. It is God's truth. It is God's revelation of himself. And so we want to gather people around this, not around our ideas, around uh, good food, around all those things are great, but ultimately we want to get people gathered around the word of God and allow the word of God to do its work in the hearts of people. And so let's begin with some foundational principles here, some prerequisites to beginning a Bible study. Number one, we must acknowledge the power of the word of God. We must acknowledge the power of the word of God. The Bible teaches us in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, for the word of God is quick. That means it's alive. It's living. It's not some dead book. It's alive. It's, it's, it's God's word. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Think of that. Uh, there's so much truth that's packed into that one verse that we can, if we just, if we just wrapped our mind around it a little bit, uh, we would have such, such enthusiasm for the Word of God if we, just, if we just believe what the Bible teaches here about itself. Um, the Bible is able to discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. Can you do that? I know I can't. Uh, I work with, uh, uh, I have worked with college-age students. I work currently with uh, school-age students, kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. And so many times you're trying to <laughs> discern the thoughts and intents of their heart, and it, you can't do it. Uh, you try, but you can't do it. Only God can do that, and only God by his word can do that. And this is something, this can do something that you and I cannot do. It's God's word. It can get right to the heart of a person and deal with the things that must be dealt with in the heart of that individual. And so that is why it's so important that we gather around the word of God in a Bible study. Isaiah 55 verse 11 teaches us something about the word of God. The Bible says, and God is speaking here, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Now, this is God speaking, referring to his word. He says, when my word goes out, it will not return unto me void. That means it won't return empty handed. It will accomplish the thing that he sends it to accomplish. He says, it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Anytime the word of God goes out and God's word is given, it will not come empty handed. It will always bring up, bring back a harvest. It will accomplish the thing that God sends it to accomplish. So we're dealing with something that is powerful, something that is beyond us. It is supernatural. It's not a natural book. It is a supernatural book. It's not like any other book. It's the word of God. And so we must acknowledge the power of the word of God, recognizing it can accomplish things that we cannot accomplish, that our words cannot accomplish. And so we are in a Bible study seeking to bring people around the power of the word of God and allow the power of the word of God to, to direct people's lives, to change their lives, and to uh, do a work that only it can do. A second prerequisite and a second foundational principle as we think about beginning a Bible study, and it is this, realize the potential of the influence God gives every believer. Now this is really getting at the heart of what, why we're here today and here this morning to talk about this subject. Um, for 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2 uh, tells us this. The Apostle Paul is writing to his son in the ministry, Timothy, and he's trained Timothy. He's just one of many young men that the Apostle Paul has trained, but Timothy seems to be highlighted, one of Paul's boys, one of the favorite ones that he worked with, and he tells him in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Now we see a pattern here given in the Word of God. And it's a pattern that is repeated throughout the Word of God. Generation to generation, 
people teaching people, fathers teaching sons, mothers teaching daughters, then those sons and daughters teaching their children, and it passes down the line. We see this principle found in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and, and in many other places. But here we, fee- we find a spotlight on the Apostle Paul. He is now grown old. He is, he is nearing death. He's writing <coughs> really what we believe to be the last letter uh, of his earthly ministry, writing to his son of the faith, the, apost- or the uh, young man Timothy. And Timothy really is, is not as young as he used to be, as he was in 1 Timothy. And uh, Paul knows he's going to meet God. He's going to face the righteous judge, as, as he speaks about in, in his letter. And we see this pattern. He says, Timothy, I have taught you some things. There are some things I have invested in your life. I've, I've placed in you. I've taught you some things. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. He says, you need to find some young men to commit these same things to, to teach these same things to. And they will then, in turn, teach others also. So we find Paul using the influence that God has given him to influence a young man named Timothy and other young men. But here we see Timothy. And Timothy then, in turn, influences and teaches faithful men. Then those faithful men teach others also. And so we must realize the potential, the influence God gives every believer. Every believer. There's no exception to this. And everyone has a sphere of influence. And this is the way God has designed his work. It's a work of multiplication, not a work of I'll give it to you, you give it to someone, he gives it to someone. It's a work of multiplication. I give it to you, and I give it to you, and you, and then all three of you, I expect to give it to others. And then they give it to others, and it begins to multiply and multiply. You know, all, God has given us a sphere of influence, a circle of friends, if you will. People that, that, that our lives touch. They are people that we work with. They are people that we go to school with. They are people that your people go to work with and go to school with and, and uh, live next to and live and and interact with on a daily and weekly basis there are people that our lives touch they are in our sphere of influence and all we're asking people to do is recognize that recognize that God has given them this influence some have great influence others have a smaller sphere of influence but everyone has some measure of influence and it is given to them by God and we must recognize that God has given us the responsibility to take what we've been taught and teach it to those within our sphere of influence. That's, all, that's what it's all about. And so when we talk about a Bible study and this, what we refer to as the second coming of the Sunday school, we're saying that the Sunday school meets on Sunday and meets in the four walls of the church, and there are people who come and hear the Word of God taught, but it should not and must not stop there. It must not stop on Sunday. It must not stop within the four walls of that Sunday school class. It must go beyond those walls with the people that, have been taught and they take it out into the places where they work and the places where they study and go to school and the places where uh, they interact with people and they teach the word of God to those people and it multiplies from there and I'll talk more about that in just a minute but uh, another prerequisite first of all acknowledging the power of the word of God realizing the potential of the influence God gives every believer number three accept your own personal responsibility to God for teaching his word to others and we've already given Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, and as we find this in the Great Commission, but we are all under this commission. There's no exceptions, no exemptions from this. And we must all, we all have the responsibility, once we know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, we have a testimony, we have a, a story to tell, and we can tell it to others and seek to reach them with the gospel. And then we also not only have that responsibility, but the responsibility to teach them the Word of God and explain to them what God would have them to do from the Bible so that they know how to live the Christian life. You cannot live the Christian life apart from God and God's word, and people need to, to hear God's word. And so these are some things, some foundational things that we must have fixed in our thinking. We must have our, have our attitude right towards the work of God and recognize that, that God has much more for us than just meeting in a room week after week, giving a lesson, and that's the end of it. It cannot just live and die on Sunday. It must live on Sunday and go out and live again on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, somewhere else out in your local communities as the people who are taught recognize their responsibility to take what they've been taught to someone else, someone in their sphere of influence, somewhere in their circle of friends, whether it be on the job or at a school or wherever. And so that's what we're trying to emphasize in this. Now, Beginning a Bible study, and as we s- said earlier, in our church, we, we began with a handful of Bible studies. We are now up to well over 100, nearly 150 Bible studies, and some are 
Some are seasonal, some are weekly, those types of things. But we, are, we constantly have people who are going out and teaching the Word of God somewhere. And we have organized Bible studies. We have Bible studies at nursing home facilities. We have Bible studies in, on school campuses, Bible studies in neighborhoods, Bible studies in workplaces throughout the Knoxville area, uh, Bible studies with uh, ball teams, and so on and so forth. So there are many, many areas where, um, and I'll give you some other examples of places where, where you could pray about beginning a Bible study. But when you think about beginning, and you inevitably ask the question, where do I start? Where do I begin? Well, I s- let, me, let me just suggest you begin with God. Begin with God in prayer, asking God how he would lead you and how he would lead you to help lead others to do the same thing, by the way. And uh, it's all about uh, you recognizing what you ought to do and then influencing others to do what they ought to do in serving the Lord. But begin with God. Begin with prayer. Then share your burden with others and get them praying with you. That's a great thing. If you get them praying with you, uh, what usually happens? They get a glimpse of it too, right? They get, a, they get a burden and a desire for it to happen, and they'll join in with you and help you get it going. Then find people who share your desire to study the Bible and begin with them. Uh, a number of years ago, I <coughs> was working at a mortgage company in downtown Knoxville and uh, several hundred employees, and God put in my heart to begin a Bible study. And uh, I began talking to some people and, and uh, finding out that there was some interest in that. And we began praying about it. And then I went and approached the vice president of the company and, and uh, asked him if, if it would be all right with him if we had a a Bible study there in the conference room area, which was a training room, uh, a little smaller than this room, and um, before work. And he said, I think that'd be great. I'd, I'd be fine with that. And so we began talking about it. We, uh, I began talking to some people that I work near, and then those people began l- inviting others to come. And uh, on numbers of occasions, we had nearly 30 people in that Bible study, and God really blessed it. But it began with God. It began with God impressing and dealing with me and showing me that I had a responsibility to teach the people and to get the word of God uh, to people that I worked with and to get them under the influence of God, God's word. And then I began to share that, and people expressed their desire to study the Bible, and they came, and then we had a place that was welcoming and inviting. That's a very important thing, and you may not have the most ideal place right off the bat, but it's always good to have a place that is quiet, that is maybe a little set aside, that is conducive to uh, studying the Bible without distraction or interruption. So find a place that is welcoming and inviting. Prepare a flyer, some type of invitation to invite people. Uh, you may use email. We, we, we did that um, where I worked. We would um, use the email, and we would send out a reminder every Monday afternoon about the Tuesday morning Bible study. And uh, we would not only send an email inviting them, we'd let them know what the Bible study topic was or what the lesson was going to be, some verses that they could be preparing for. And uh, we just tried to try to get them engaged in what was going on. So uh, it takes a little time to get something off the ground at times, but um, if you'll if you'll stay with it, God will bless it. Then, in leading a Bible study, there are several things I'd like to point out to you. Number one, keep the Bible central. It's very easy to get distracted and to get off track in something like this. Whenever you get people together and in a room together or in a place um, gathered together. A lot of times something like that can digress into something uh, that's off topic. But you must work as you lead a Bible study to um, keep the Bible central. Make sure that that's the most important thing and that's the purpose for which you're meeting. Uh, Number two, have a clearly defined statement of purpose and tell people why you're meeting. Let them know we're here to study the Bible. This is not a place for debate. It's not a place of of, uh, open discussion to where you're just going to, everybody brings their ideas and, uh, what do you think about it? I don't know. What do you think about it? And they just exchange their ignorance about the Bible. No, there needs to be someone who has prepared themselves, who has studied, who knows uh, and, and, and leads in the direction of the thing so that, so that it keeps people directly tied to the Word of God and um, it does not digress into something that it should not, should not be. Um, another thing is select or uh, uh, en- rather enlist people to help. Um, get people involved. That will... That will help um, generate interest and engage people in what's going on. Get people to help you. Um, get people to help prepare the literature. Get people to help greet people as they come into the Bible study. Get people to um, uh, get prayer requests together. We, we had a lady who volunteered to uh, keep up with all the prayer requests in the Bible study group. 
and uh, we would take prayer requests, and she would keep up with it and keep people updated. She'd send out a regular email every couple days um, reminding people of the things that we're praying about and the people that had needs, and she did a great job uh, doing that, and that, that was a real blessing to people, and it kept these prayer requests before people and reminded them to pray, and, and, and it's an amazing thing when you get people praying for one another, um, how much of an interest they take in one another's lives, and you see them in the break room or see them in the lunchroom in, in a school setting or um, see them out in the community at a grocery store. And, and when you see them, what do you think of? You think of their prayer requests. You think of what they're, what's on their heart, what's on their mind. You, you ask them about it. You say, look, I've been praying for you. L- look what that fosters in the live, uh, lives of people and, and how they recognize that, that God is interested in their lives and, and God's people ha- have taken an interest in their life. And it's a wonderful thing. Select a sound Bible study series and provide literature to the attendees to engage them to actively participate and to aid their understanding. I've brought with me some materials that we use. We use uh, a Sunday school series uh, in our Sunday school here. Pastor Sexton has written a many, um, many Sunday school series, and this is what we use in our, in our Sunday school. But we also use this in our, in our community Bible studies. And really, the way we've designed this to work and the way our pastor has led us to, to do this is um, we have a Sunday school lesson on Sunday where a, <coughs> by the way, I brought here a, a packet. This is a teacher's packet that includes three things. It includes a full-length book and uh, takes you directly to the Word of God and uh, helps you get an understanding of the passage. And so it just is there to help you as the teacher to understand the passage, to be able to teach, teach the Word of God. There is a teacher's notebook, and it looks just like this. It's a three-ring binder, small three-ring binder. Inside it are, are an abbreviated uh, lesson sheet for each lesson, and it gives some instruction for the teacher, gives some lesson aims, and then some teaching notes. And so a teacher, after, as they read the Word of God and prepare the lesson, they can take some notes on this. They can slide it right inside their Bible and take it with them to teach the lesson but it's just a helpful thing to help them stay on track as they teach. And then there's also a study guide, which is a booklet that contains all the lesson sheets in here where the students, those that are listening to the lesson, can take notes. And what we've done is we've encouraged people who come to Sunday school here and who recognize their responsibility to teach others to take their notes, go out the door on Sunday, and teach it somewhere else outside of the church doors, out off the property, somewhere in the local community. And we're trying to embrace our community with the love of Christ by taking the word of God and teaching it to others. And so that's the way we've designed this. And so the, the way each one of these Sunday school series is put together is, is designed in such a way so that it can be taken and taught to someone else. And that's what we've done. When we uh, mentioned again the Bible study that we started in the downtown Knoxville area. It was, uh, I have so many fond memories of the folks that came to that. And there was some, uh, an elderly lady Actually, there were several elderly ladies that came that were very passionate about it, and they were a great blessing to me. And one lady in particular, I remember, these, these folks worked in cubicles, large areas where there were just c- cubicles everywhere. And this one lady, um, we would come, and I would have uh, copies of the lesson sheets and provide that to everyone who came. And I w- would teach the lesson, and afterwards we'd have a time of prayer, and she would take all the extra lessons that were left over and she would then take those and go back to her place of work. And s- at some point during the day, during a break or something, she would go around to the cubicles of the folks around her. And she would e- give them each a lesson and say, this is what we learned in our Bible study today. Let me just tell you a little bit about it. And she would just, in, in two or three minutes, she would tell them a little bit about the lesson, give them the lesson sheet, and she'd move on. And she'd encourage them to come. And several of them did come. But she had an understanding of something. She recognized it wasn't just for her. It was for her to then turn and give to someone else. And she, she got it. She understood the point. And uh, it was a great blessing. So it went from Sunday school here out to a workplace and f- in a conference room area. And from that conference room area, it went to individual cubicles where people were getting the word of God and, and having someone take an interest in their lives. And that, that's what we're trying to, to encourage folks to do. And so <coughs> having a Sunday school series or a Bible study series is very, very important, and select something. There are 13 lessons in each one of these series, and I brought several of them with me. Just to show you, this particular series is entitled The Lord is My Shepherd, and The Lord is My Shepherd is a, uh, is a favorite among many folks. It's a study on the 23rd Psalm, 
Psalm 23. And so many folks love this. In fact, we're planning a, to uh, do a special edition of this for the military, and we're excited about that. Um, here is a series entitled Lord Send a Revival. It's a series on the book of Habakkuk. It's something we've done <coughs> several years ago, and we've actually revisited this particular series, and so many people have been blessed by, by this series on Lord Send a Revival, a study of the book of Habakkuk. Here is volume one of a two-volume set on um, the book of Ecclesiastes entitled The Conclusion of the Whole Matter. And uh, this has been so helpful to... Uh, this, this was a series that really rang, rang the bell of folks in, in the business community in which I at one time served in and taught a Bible study. They just, uh, the meaning of life and emptiness without God, living life to the fullest, but living it without God is empty, it's vain, and purposeless, and uh, it really struck a chord with some of the people there, and God really used it. Um, here's a series on the life of David. This is volume one. There are two volumes to that. Here's a volume one set on the parables of Jesus, and uh, there are two volumes. There are also two volumes set on the miracles of Jesus. These are just a few, s a sampling of, of some. Uh, if you have your conference bulletin, if you have it there with you, I'd like to direct you to a section in that, just a few pages in, if you can find it there. Not all the way in the back, but just a few pages from the back, you'll find a page that looks just like this, if you can find that there. Uh, if you'll go to the middle and just go a few pages toward the back, You'll find that, but you'll see here 31 series listed and um, some information about that. And if you have some questions, I'd be happy to help you, but this is just to help you find, get started and uh, have a good, solid series to start with and get people in the Word of God. These, uh, Pastor Sexton has been very diligent and, and, and conscientious about you uh, designing these series so that it gets people in the Word of God. It's not just for them to read a book and, and read something about the Bible, but it's designed to get them into the Bible and, God willing, the Bible into them, into their hearts and their lives, and so it will affect their lives. And as the teacher, you have to really work at making the application, bringing it together with people's lives and seeing it resonate with them. Um, back to our list here of leading a Bible study. I'd encourage you just some practical things. Bring extra Bibles for folks that may not have one. That'd be helpful to them. Um, take prayer requests. We talked about that. Have a time of prayer together. It's always good to get people praying together, praying for one another and with one another, and that's always been a helpful thing in the experiences that I've had. S set aside time for fellowship, and this is helpful. It doesn't need to be all about fellowship, but fellowship is a component of that. It's a component of Sunday school classes, and it can also be a component and a, a wonderful thing in a Bible study setting. Interact throughout the teaching time. Make students participants by using discussion, questions, and answers. This is, if you study the, the Lord Jesus and his earthly ministry, and particularly his teaching methods, he used many methods to engage people into what, into the truths that he was trying to get across. He would use questions. He would probe with questions. He would discuss. He, he, he would use these methods to try to engage their thinking and get them right into what he was trying to get across, the truth that he was trying to communicate to them. Get people to at who attend to promote the Bible study to others and get others to come. Um, keep good records. It would always be helpful to have some kind of a, maybe a survey card uh, to hand people as the, the first time they come just to find out a little bit about them. You may discover that they, they perhaps don't attend church anywhere, or you may find out they do attend and they then attend some other denomination. We had folks coming to the Bible study in the one that I was directly involved with, um, came from several different denominational groups. And in fact, uh, I'll tell you this one story. One lady who came, came up to me after one uh, Bible study session, and she, she was a kind, uh, she, she meant this to be a great compliment, and I appreciated it. She said, I just want you to know, um, and she told me where she attended church. It was a, a large um, church in the area. It was actually a Baptist church in the area. Um, but she said this, and I, she meant it to be a compliment, but she said, I just want you to know I get more Bible in this 20-minute Bible study than I get all week in the church that I attend. Now, I appreciated the fact that she's getting the Bible, and I'm, I was happy about that, but I was so disappointed to think that uh, she was getting more Bible in a 20-minute office Bible study than she was getting at her church, attending it two or three times a week. And um, unfortunately, that was a terrible indictment on that church, I suppose, but... but uh, 
it's good that we're getting the word of God to people, and I'm glad that she was coming. And uh, just think, there are people out there who are attending, who maybe attend no church or attending a, a weak church that could be benefited greatly by you or your people in your church taking the word of God and teaching it out there in the local communities. And so I want to encourage you uh, to help people with that. Identify people who are not actively involved in a local church and work with them to invite them to come. And then challenge those who hear the Bible lesson to teach that lesson to someone else. And that's what it's all about. And so we've come full circle. But uh, where could you start Bible studies? You could start Bible studies among men, men Bible studies, men groups. We have some of those with women, children, children Bible studies, youth Bible studies, Bible studies among singles. We have Bible studies in businesses, and that would be a good place to start. Schools. We have... uh, 29 um, middle schools and high schools where we have Bible studies in, this, in the Knoxville area. Neighborhoods, community centers, nursing homes. You can have Bible studies among interest groups or hobby groups, golfers, fishermen, uh, people who are interested in firearms, that kind of thing. There are, there are clubs and groups out there, and maybe, maybe you have someone who's involved in something like that, and they could get people engaged in a Bible study of that, of that nature. Uh, hospitals, um, nursing homes. You know, hospitals are a great place to have a Bible study. Um, people are people are sensitive to to the things of God, and and uh, it'd be a great opportunity. But those are just a few examples of some places where we've had Bible studies, and and where we can encourage you to 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 begin and to start.